I'm back with another IPKVM video. This market of IPKVMs has grown a lot in the last couple of years. There's so many options out there now that at different price points. So it kind of, you know, you, you have a lot of choice of what you want to use that will work best for your needs. And I like seeing the variety of products because I think it does help keep the prices down and kind of the, the competition growing because it wasn't that long ago that all these IP KVMs only support a 1080p. And I feel like now a lot of them are supporting 4k resolution, which is great because that's what I've been wanting because where I do screen captures for, you know, tutorials and guides and stuff, it's really beneficial for me to have Chris 4k screen capture so that I can include it with my 4k footage and have a nice 4k experience. Today's video is on the GLINet Comet Pro, which also does 4k as well. So this is great to have another 4k KVM to look at. And uh, so I do appreciate having those options available. So the Comet Pro is very similar to the Jet KVM in style, but it's almost like twice as big as the Jet KVM. And they didn't really go for a minimal form factor size like the Jet KVM did, even though they also have a touchscreen just like Jet KVM. It's just like twice as wide pretty much as the Jet KVM. And the reason why they went for this form factor is because the, the Comet Pro supports Wi-Fi. And not only does it support Wi-Fi, they support you being able to enter in the SSID and Wi-Fi password directly from the screen. And so you need to have a bigger screen to be able to type on it. So you can actually type, there's a little keyboard that pops up and you can actually type in your password for your SSID. So you actually don't even need to log into the web interface through ethernet to be able to set up Wi-Fi. You can directly set it up from the device, the Wi-Fi connection, so you can get into the Comet Pro directly to the web interface once it's on your network. So that's very convenient. And I found that even with my big, big, relatively big fingers, I can still type on it pretty well without hitting the wrong keys. So they did pretty good. It's like about the smallest screen size you could have and still be able to type on a full keyboard. And at first when I saw that the uh, Comet Pro is going to offer Wi-Fi, I was like, well, I don't need Wi-Fi. I don't care about Wi-Fi on a IP KVM device because I usually have it plugged into Ethernet because it's near a wall jack or something like that. After I thought about it some more, I do like the idea that the Comet Pro has Wi-Fi capabilities it's for at least one of my IP KVMs because where I do a lot of system testing and various things in my office, at my desk behind me, and sometimes it's beside my desk over here, I really move this IP KVM around a lot to, to just try out some things and test things really quickly. And I don't always want to have to run an Ethernet cable because I already filled up my wall jacks that I have and I have a network switch over here. And I don't want to have to get a cable out every time I'm moving something around because sometimes I just do temporary setups. And so having a wireless IPKVM is actually really beneficial. And it might be beneficial for you too if you're somewhere where you want to test something out and you don't have Ethernet jacks. Maybe you only have one for the main system on the wall or something and you don't want to run another Ethernet cable over there. So I like that the Pro has both Ethernet and Wi-Fi capabilities. So you can still use it instead of Wi-Fi if you want, but it's not PoE. So that's kind of a bummer, but they do have a separate Comet model that does PoE. It's like the original one. It doesn't have a screen. So if you really want PoE capabilities and you don't care about the screen or Wi-Fi capabilities, you could check out the Comet PoE version. They also increase the amount of storage from, I think it was eight gigabytes to 32 gigabytes. And I think it's supposed to be faster storage as well. We'll test that out during this video and see if the performance is better. So that would be great to see better performance because that was one of my minor complaints and on the original Comet was the storage size capacity was small and it was really slow, right? So eight gigabytes is not enough space because it also has an operating system on it and you can barely put one ISO image on it if you want to be able to install and mount that and install it on a device. One feature some users will appreciate is the fact that Comet has HDMI pass-through so you can still connect your monitor up and still use the KVM on the same system. And this is the first Comet that has HDMI pass-through. The Comet Pro comes with a power cord, two different types of USB cables, two HDMI cables, an ethernet cable, and some documentation. To set up the Comet Pro, you just connect the HDMI in on the Comet and connect it to your HDMI of your PC. I'm using this mini PC as an example. Then you connect the USB for the keyboard and mouse to the USB port of your PC. Then you connect the power cord to the Comet Pro and connect that to your power source. 
Next up, you connect the ethernet cable if you're using ethernet. Otherwise, you can just connect, configure your wireless connection. If you have an accessory such as the FingerBot, you can plug that accessory into the accessory port. And finally, if you have an external monitor you want to use, you can connect that to your monitor so you can still use your PC while being remotely controlled. The Comet Pro, just like the original Comet, has the ability to have extensions plugged into it. And they actually sent me one of their FingerBot uh, extensions, which is pretty cool because the extension for that allows you to have a physical button pusher uh, that's really neat. So you can control that from the Comet Pro or the original Comet or even the Comet PoE. So all of their models are supporting these extensions, which are these uh, devices you can connect in to add uh, extra capabilities. And it's basically just a a little USB dongle you plug in to the back and that gives you ability to control that device. If you go to the accessories menu, you'll see it detects the finger bot and you can pick the strength of the press, which is lightly or firmly press. And you can pick the time frame of how long you want to press it. And then you just click the press button. And when you click press, you'll see that it moves the finger bot to turn the power on. With the original Comet, they sent me the ATX power control board and I, and I wanted to see if you can control it with the Comet Pro. And I plugged it into the Comet Pro and you can see in the menu and accessories, it shows up as ATX power, just like the original Comet. And you can do short press, long press and restart. So it works just the same way. So that's great if you want to buy this accessory as well to control ATX power supplies. The Comet Pro's web interface is very similar to the original Comet, which is based off of Pi KVM. You can see various system options here for screen sizes and keyboard and mouse options and other system options. And then the toolbox has the ability to wake up devices with wake on LAN. And you can do some other shortcut keys as well as a clipboard so you can copy paste text into say a text editor or a web browser or whatever you need to paste. I use this a lot for pasting and passwords or whatever from my main system. The accessories is for extensions as we've seen before. The virtual media allows you to mount the Comet Pro storage as a USB thumb drive or as an ISO image. And I'm uploading a file to check out its transfer rate and it looks like it's about 25 to 28 megabytes per second, which is way faster than the five or six megabytes a second of the original Comet. I want to show mounting it as a file share and it basically makes it like a USB thumb drive where you can copy files to and from both systems. So you'll see down and below that I just mount this as like a USB thumb drive on the remote system. So the files that I copied up there are now available on the remote system. And now I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm going to show it as an ISO image, which makes it if you want to install a device. So it shows up as like a CD-ROM device and just mount that image. And it'll pop up similarly to what we did before, except this time it is like a CD-ROM drive. You see the contents of the ISO image so you can install it. Finally, you can get remote access with TailScale if you like. So full disclosure, GLINet sent me the Comet Pro to try out and they didn't get to see this video before I post it. And I appreciate them for sending me these products so I can try them out, see how well they work. And these devices seem to work well with booting up in a different operating systems and the firmware now is becoming a lot more mature when, than when the Comet first came out, the original Comet. And so I'm glad to see that that stuff is working well with their current hardware and 4K works well, booting up into different devices works well. So until next time, I'm Dustin Casto, I'm signing out.